Hello and welcome to this tutorial on creating an automatic spawner in Unity with only one script by applying force response rigid bodies. This shooter is rigid body Unity physics based shooter so you are born. This shooter takes a game object to shoot and this game object will be called spawn throughout the video and it adds a force to its rigid body that's linear to the distance between the spawn position and the mouse position when mouse is pressed down. If I were to release the mouse, the action stops. So let's go and see some values that we can take. So first value is new spawn duration. This this decides the frequency of new spawns. When I increase the duration, frequency drops, as you can see. Before it was 0.1 and the spawns were very continuous, very frequent, and when I higher the duration between each spawn, it lowered them. And we also have the force multiplier. Force multiplier amplifies the force vector that's applied to our spawn's rigid body. At the first, if I were to be that close to my game object and the force multiplier will be 2, the spawns will be landing to more closer to our game object. And in this case, it will be go higher. And let's go and see at the value of 2 here. I think it was somewhere here. And it's it's just a little bit closer, but I hope that you can see the difference here. And since we done through the shooter's speakable values, let's go and create a new spawn object and shoot it. I will create a cube. And I will add a rigid body because this is a rigid body based shooter. Now my cube is ready and I will be making it a prefab and get rid of the one in the end. And I will set that as my prefab. So here is the catch of this tutorial. This tutorial benefits from another tutorial series I have been making. It benefits by making the game object stick to environment. But the focus of this tutorial is not sticking game objects but just spawning them with an automatic shooter. So to have that behavior that was created in the previous tutorial series, I need to have a line of code to our current behavior, which is called automatic shoot. I will just command it. Everything will work just fine. Okay. So now I have my new spawn cube prefab attached to my automatic shoot. So my spawn is here, and when I press down the left mouse button, they are started to be spawned. And since this game object doesn't have the behaviors that I mentioned about, it will not be sticking around, but it will just falling down by the laws of gravity. So this is how you can add new spam to this shooter script. I will be leaving the link of a gist of the script to the description so you can use it however you like in your projects. I am adding my previous spam to the project and it is working again but this time I need to open this so that it will stick. And now when I try to shoot it, it will be working just like before. So let's go and check out the code so when you are using it, you will know what does what. So we have this public variables that was explained in the editor, but let's go through them anyway. So spawn prefab to game object is that that our spawn and will be spawned by our shooter and will be shoot by our shooter. So new spawn duration is the duration between a game object is shoot and a new game object is instantiated. Force multiplier amplifies the value of force vector that is applied to rigid body of the spawn. So we have two positions, one spawn position and one spawn screen position. Spawn position is the position where the spawns will be spawned. I take the transform position of the shooter game object but you can take that position from a place order game object and I explained how you can do that in my other videos so you can go and check it out but for this we are just taking the position of the shooter game object as spawn position and spawn screen position is a transformed version of spawn position from 3D world space to 2D screen space by using cameras world to screen point Function. And as explained here, it transforms position from world space into screen space. And spawn parent is a game object that holds newly created spawns under its transform so that we will have a clean hierarchy. If there was no parent, our hierarchy would not look like this, but like this, and it will continue. So to keep the hierarchy clean and tidy, we use parents spawn new objects under. And after we set up initial values of the project, we start by spawning a new object. 
so that when the uh, project runs, we will see the first spawn and where will our spawns will be spawned in the editor in the scene. Okay, this was some of the setup variables, and we have two more private variables in our project. Current spawn game object is the reference of the current spawn that we see that we haven't shoot yet in our shooter, and spawn ready signals us whether there is a spawn available to be shoot or not. This is used so that the shooter does not try to shoot a non-existent spawn. And since we went through all these, let's go and check out the spawn new object function. So spawn new object as the name says spawn the new object. And how it is spawned is it takes original game object, it takes where it will be spawned with the attorney identity rotation and which parent to be spawned under. We use spawn parent so that the hierarchy will be keep clean and tidy. And since we spawn the new object, we have a spawn ready. So spawn ready boolean set the true. Now we have a spawn object. Let's go back to update function. Here we checked with input get mouse button function whether the left button of the mouse is pressed or not. If it is pressed and pressed down, this function will be returned true value and auto shoot function will be called. In auto shoot, we check if there is a spawn ready. If so, we shoot the current spawn. Spawn ready is not true. That means we already shot the spawn and a new spawn is not there yet. It's not spawn yet. So we need to wait before we try to shoot it again. This helps us check that. And let's go to shoot function. At the shoot function, we calculate the force vector that we will apply to rigid body of the spawn. And this force function is calculated as the vector that starts from the spawn's screen position to where the mouse is while it's pressed down. And it will be applied as a force to game object's rigid body. While applying that function, we amplify its value with force multiplier so that its value will be amplified and have a bigger impact of the movement of the rigid body. And while we are creating our force vector, since these two values are screen space values, these vectors are actually vector trees which has that value as zero and so if we want to add a force to make our game object move towards the z-axis we need to apply a force towards the z-axis also. I prefer to apply y value of force vector also to z value of force vector that will be the finished version of the force vector that's applied to game object so that we will see more spherical, more parabolic movement from our rigid body. And here is the setup for stitch behavior that's not relevant to this tutorial. Continue on. And now that we shoot the game object, we set our spawn ready boolean to be false because there is no spawn at this moment. And since we don't have any spawns now, we need to create new ones to continue shooting them because this behavior is a shooter. So that we call spawn new object function after new spawn duration using invoke method. And after this duration passes, a new game object will be spawned. So that our loop will continue. A very quick go through of this behavior. At the start, we initialize some values and spawn our new object. And after we spawn object, we said we have already have a spawn ready. And if the player presses left mouse button anytime, auto shoot function is called. At the auto shoot function, we check if spawn ready. If spawn ready, we try to shoot that game object. And after we shoot that game object, we say there is no available spawn, so spawn is not ready. Spawn ready is false. And after the new spawn duration, the duration between the new spawn each time, we spawn a new object. And this loop continues throughout the mechanism. So this is how the code worked. So let's see some last demos. And, and here it goes very messy, but if I were to close them down and clean up again. And this is how you can create an automatic shooter shooting by applying force to its spawns in Unity. I hope that it will be helpful to you. If there was a point not clear, please let me know in the comments down below. I will try to do my best to help you with that. As mentioned, I will be leaving a link to the gist of this script and also leaving the link to relevant but not necessary tutorials that can benefit this demo. If you like this video, please consider liking it and subscribing for the new videos to come. If you have any feedback, I will be happy to hear them from the comments section down below. And that's it for now. I hope to see you in the next explorations. Bye bye. I don't like playing with this. Like, can you see the trail grander? They are just cute. So, so cute. I like it. Okay, bye bye.